Okay, so thank you everybody. Thanks for coming. Uh, I guess we have an agenda. Uh, you all have a link to the Google Docs documents for this uh, uh, for this list. And uh, so we usually start a little update on where we are on GMT development. And I think our last meeting was before Christmas. Is that correct? Sometime. So a lot of things have happened other than GMT. <laughs> but uh, we keep cranking. We released 6.3, obviously, last fall. And we've been working on a whole bunch of bug fixes and um, new features, minor features here and there um, in the package. And we have a whole bunch of outstanding PRs that I need to get back to. But if they sit too long, I forget why I, I opened them. <laughs> it's an it's a old age thing, I guess. I can't juggle too many balls now. I got to limit myself to a manageable number of balls that, that fall on the floor otherwise. Uh, so you can see the, the statistics there. Uh, highlights are, you know, we, with, with Federico's help, we, we improved the DCW data sets. We, we fixed the bug that Todd Peter pointed out, and I think it was one of the islands off Germany. Um, we have uh, added a bunch of collections to the DCW, so one can use names of features and islands and regions to set the region in GMT plots. Uh, we'll talk about that a little bit more later. And uh, we have uh, added a whole bunch of remote data sets to the list that we had. You know, you might recall we had the, the Samuel Smith uh, FRTM 15 uh, grid. We have now added Jebco and SynVap, the, the new Samuel version with synthetic data for C mounts and uh, young seafloor fabric, John Goff's uh, methodology. We also added the gravity and vertical gravity gradient data sets. The, several magnetic fields, a geoid, and any, anyone I left out there, I can't remember, a whole bunch of them. Uh, and on the agenda is an issue how to announce the availability of these, because people don't necessarily find out unless there is some ping, even though they are available to everybody uh, as of last week. So that's, uh, and then of course we, we've moved all the uh, PostScript examples used for testing uh, out of Git, well, they're still in Git, but we're, we're no longer storing them in Git. We're storing them in uh, in the data version control DVC. So Megan, and I implemented all that. It's the same that's used for PyGBT, I believe, uh, so that we don't have to store large PostScript files for testing in the GMT repo. Uh, so this means we could have more tests in the future without bloating up the, the GMT Git uh, the repo. Uh, and we have improved the documentation for these new data files. And we've decoupled, I think we did this after last year, decoupled the documentation for the remote data sets from the GMT distribution, since they're sort of decoupled. You know, we might add new data sets in the middle of a release cycle, and we don't want that to depend on when GMT next version is released. Um, that's what I remember. Anything else, Megan, that I should should have mentioned? Yep, that seemed like a pretty detailed summary, thanks. Any questions about any of those bits? Okay, I encourage you to look at the, the updated data sets. And I think Walter familiarize. had a question. Oh, sorry, Walter. Yeah, um, sorry, I'm just uh, thinking because you mentioned uh, adding a geoid um, in my business and I guess in Remco's business, it matters a lot whose geoid you add and what resolution it has and that sort of thing. There's this wonderful um, service at GFZ where you can choose any any gravity field model you want and they'll compute it for you, but they won't compute the whole world at the right. full resolution. Um, so you have to end up downloading lots of tiles and spending a lot of time cutting and pasting. So um, I was wondering whether it would be worthwhile reaching out to those guys and seeing if they would um, Make a you know a full resolution computed version available that could be uh, fed into GMT and maybe I guess it would be hosted by them. I don't know if they if if our community has interest in that or if those guys have interest in that, but I can see being a user of that. Yeah, sure. I can tell you first that what we have is the EGM two thousand eight, uh, which is MGA. I guess that made that. It's a one arc minute uh, grid. I took the original. There's some sort of Fortran coefficients and things to produce a grid. And uh, I figured this is useful for people who 
may not be specialists and need you know a specific version specific harmonic number all, all that kind of stuff that uh, pros might need but want to make a map of the geode or some something like that so in the same same, same sense that people want to make a map of topography uh, if and, and of course there are all kinds of uh, tweaks you can imagine doing to getting the right kind of geode you want and i'm not sure if gmt will support that from our side you know but uh, there are clearly as you mentioned there are people who specialize in this that would be better positioned to even produce these because it's in a gmt format and maybe it's better to reach out to them to sort of encourage that uh, well, there may be no harm in the outreach. On the other hand, this may be way too specialized to be a, a general addition to GMT. So I, I withdraw the suggestion. Yeah. That was my gut feeling, but you know, I don't know. It depends. Uh, we should encourage people who release data sets to at least at least release them as net CDF cores files and so on. They won't believe, you know, Jetco is like a seven gigabyte uncompressed double precision grid with <laughs> precision to one meter or something like that. It's like, why are they doing this to people? Are they, you know, showing off their bandwidth or something? I don't know. It's just really amazing. <laughs> so, you know, we, we can try to gently remind people some basic principles and, and releasing very large data sets. <laughs> I think we got it down to, I don't know, 25% uh, of that, you know, just by just storing it as integer net CDF compressed. Seven gigabyte is a long download from London to Hawaii, I found. Uh, okay, uh, any other issues uh, related to that data sets? Um, other than the release of the release of them and the, the uh, documentation. I guess we could, uh, should we, since we're doing talking about the data set, should we skip to point four first, which is related, which is the, you know, the remote data set edition and how do we, tell users and we should make some announcements and so on. Federico put up that point and I agree. Um, so uh, yes, I think the answer is yes. We do want to put a news item out on the places we can and that's forum and Twitter and Instagram. I guess we just have to craft the message, what, what that looks like, all right? Yeah, I think it would be fantastic to have uh, perhaps an animation that shows off the new data sets. So I'm not sure if, if Federico, you create some pretty amazing animations. Do you have any ideas for what we could um, produce to promote those new data sets? Uh, no, no, really. I have to think a lot about uh, uh, right now. I, I don't have any idea about any new animation. It could be as simple as, uh, you know, I think an, an image. Hey. I thought maybe a sequence of images, you know, it, just, it could be a dumb video, I guess, where it just cycles through the new data sets. My, so it's not, not, not much of an animation, but it's just uh, instead of a static picture, it will just cycle through the six, seven, eight data sets that are available. I think we have uh, uh, one of the animation scripts that does something similar for the Earth day night images. So we could just adapt that pretty quickly to create one for each of the remote data sets. Yeah, I think it'd be. It doesn't. I do. think it doesn't even use movie. It just uses FFmpeg to create a simple video. Yeah, we're talking ten frames or something like that, aren't we? Like an animated GIF or something. Very simple. Yeah, that'd be good, and then that can be used in the different platforms. I'm happy to help with this. It shouldn't be too difficult, but I think we should do this. I agree with the idea. We should announce. I think users will not find out otherwise <laughs> other than by, by osmosis or seeing some example on the forum. Um, uh, any other Paul, thoughts on, yeah. yeah. Uh, I was gonna suggest if you wanna craft the um, forum post with the whatever um, simple GIF you think is best, then Federico and I could adapt it for Twitter and, and Instagram. Yeah. Yeah, I can make a pull request, I guess, when I get to some point there. Yeah, that's fine. It's a good idea. Paul, I don't know if you saw the uh, comment in the chat from Federico suggesting that the uh, the Zoom feed for this meeting could um, display the document that you're you're uh, speaking to 
um, I have it open in a different window, but um, maybe for the sake of completeness for the capture of the Zoom for the archive video, you might want to uh, have something up there. Um, Citing right. new background, Remco, that's great. <laughs> Look at that. <laughs> yeah, it can be, maybe, maybe Megan is faster than me to find that page with the data sets. So she's the one who's been setting it up. Uh, There's yeah, a link, link to the Google Doc is also in the uh, chat. Uh, chat, message yes. Bar. Yeah, we'll get the post it uh, in there in a second. I'm sorry, I Paul. I, I didn't think to, to update my permissions before starting the meeting, so I'd have to close it and uh, break our continuity in order to share my screen. Uh, if you're able to do that, oh, that would be helpful. Okay, I'll second. Yeah, let me. Let me. <laughs> so slow here. I didn't have this page up, Walter, so I got to find it. Documentation. Sorry. That's all right. Uh, data sets. Um, just to clarify, I think Federico was talking about the, the Google Doc with the minutes rather than the docs pages for the yes. respected releases. OK. I was looking at. The remote data set link. Isn't that, I thought that was what Walter asked about. The currently available data sets that did I misunderstand you, Walter? Well, I, I was trying to call your attention to an issue Federico raised. I we should let him speak to it. But I guess okay. what I'm saying is if the um I don't know whether I haven't looked back at the at the video capture of these uh, meetings. I don't know whether the chats are also captured and the links in them or what, but I was just saying, if we're talking right. about a list of things in a document, it might be helpful to see that document on the screen for a few minutes, um, oh, just see. so that the archive of the video is clear to people watching it, what we're talking about. All right, well, let me uh, share my screen here then a second. All right, can you see my screen? Yes. Okay, so uh, here's the document with agenda. And uh, here's the uh, remote data set documentation. You can see we have put up a little thumbnail and image for each of the data sets that are now available. And so we have several the symmetry flavors, and they all go from the native resolution of the grids, which are 15 arc second, I think, for all of them. And then we add SFDM one and three arc seconds where that's available. I'm trying to extend that from 60 latitude up and south using some of the products from uh, uh, the Minnesota group. Uh, I'm cranking that on my computer right now to make uh, geographic tiles. It's a very slow process because they're like eight meter resolution <laughs> on a stereographic net. Uh, but it seems to have a lot of you know, and blemishes in the grid, I think. It's not perfect. It's just a huge data dump of terabytes of satellite derived uh, inferred bathymetry and topo topography. Um, did this help? We can have this uh, in the video. Um, this is accessible, of course, from the GMT documentation page by looking at remote data sets. And I will stop sharing. That's okay. All right. So we have a plan for the release of the data then, or the announcement of the data. Uh, we'll wait for a, a PR from me to the forum, uh, to the web, to the web page, I think, and uh, we can look at that together with Megan and Federico. All right, the other one is adaption of, of, of scripts and gallery animation tests to use the scripts to use the new data sets. Um, well, most of them are, well, use the new data sets. So what do you mean, Megan, uh, the additional data sets or the revised versions of things? Because the revised version will automatically be pulled in. Yeah, I'll, I'll let Federico speak to this. Uh, it was his okay. suggestion on the forum. Okay, Federico, go ahead. Oh, my, my idea was to include the those new grids, new news, this new remote grids, so the users, if 
for okay. example, in the gallery, go directly and, uh, and knows the, about uh, these grids. And that's that's the idea. I know that maybe if we change the, good to have a, um, to don't look for the set uh, read every time run the, the script, the, the sample, but maybe to add a node so the users can uh, search for the remote data grids. That's, that's the idea. Okay. Yeah, we can, hmm. right. So the, yeah, the gallery. Okay, reset here. So the gallery is currently at what, 50 or something examples. And we kind of decided that we we should put more effort into very simple examples of how to do basic stuff, right? How to plot a line, plot a circle, because the gallery examples have, have traditionally been more like showcases for what GMT can do and not so much, you know, how do you do something? So a newbie comes in and looks at example three, the panic, right? Because there's so much complicated stuff going on that GMT can do versus they just want to plot a bunch of points on top of their map. So, uh, I've been hesitant in adding more examples to the gallery. I'm not sure where we want to go with that. Do you want the gallery to have, you know, hundreds of plots of various complexity or do Yeah, but I, th to... I think what Frederick is saying is to to make use of these remote data yeah. sets probably a bit more often um, than we did. I know the eTopo mm -hmm. 2, I think, features sure. in, in one or two examples, but it's always the same. And maybe to, you know, differentiate um, some of these. Yeah. So people get aware there's not only one data set that we have on sure map. oh that's totally that, that's totally cool and we do plan to add more animations you know so there's just a question of coming up with some idea that will be cool to show you know dot 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 showing magnetic field or showing you know what, what, what do we do there right i mean it's a little bit of just being creative of thinking of something that will be good to animate using these various data sets and uh Federico has been very good at coming up with good ideas there, so I'm I'm hoping that will continue, <laughs> and and then we can use use these uh, new data sets. Um, so I mean, it goes for all of you. If you have any suggestions uh, of examples that involve these new data sets, that think would be cool, even if you just have an idea and don't have time or skill set to do it, you know, let us know because. Uh, I agree that we want to show that we have these data sets available and we can do all these cool things with them. Um, will those new postscripts go to the DVC repo? The documentation pages are set up to only use yeah. DVC at this yeah. point in time. So I mean, any new examples would need to use that structure. I mean, the gallery, the galleries, postscripts, are there in DVC as well? Will there be there only? Yeah, they're currently, um, the history still exists. We haven't done any rebasing of the Git repository. The um, current versions um, are absent from the head of the Git repo and are only in DVC. I'm not sure I get what I was. Um, so if you were to do- We are going to update. <clears throat> Pardon. If you are going to update those PostScript files, are they going to be stored only on the D on the DVC or in the GMT repo as well? Because if they are going to be in the GMT repo as well, no, they will be stored only uh, in uh, DVC. Uh, yes, but are they going to be removed from the GMT repo? I uh, that's a good question. That's a good question, right? Because, because I uh, don't they, think it's worth to keep make them growing just because it's a bit nice. And then you have gigabytes of, on the repo. Yeah, yeah. So I think, Joachim, we, we had this discussion before and we had Leo yeah. involved. It's, it's not super simple to, to do this without, you know, kind of building a new repo from the old repo where we exclude a whole bunch of pieces because it's sort of entrained in, in, in the history of things. So it's not super simple to just like it was with the old SVN and system. We just deleted specific files and it was okay. It's a little bit more complicated with, with Git. But I, I think you might want to do this because there's a lot of bloat in there, right? A lot of Postgres files and history of Postgres files. So maybe this is something we 
we'll have to do. Maybe when GMT know, seven comes out, it will be a fresh repo that doesn't have that history in it. And we're just in all bad. If I remember something in the meeting about October or something, it was, I think it was assumed that we could rip up all, all the postscripts from the repo after the DVC. Is not that so? Yeah, theoretically, we we certainly could. Um, it's not, a, I really enjoyed setting up DVC. It is not a task that I <laughs> would look forward to for rewriting history of GMT development before I was on this job. But uh, if you told me to figure it out, I would. Yeah, I think the only, I mean, I think it's a good idea, right? The only thing that might be an issue is that, if I understand it correctly though, is that if we do this change, people who have checked out GMT from Git or forked something, we have to redo that because it's, it breaks something. But other than that, I think it's a benefit that the repo will be much smaller going forward. And we can abandon, you know, not only the Postgre file, but maybe some really old GMT stuff that we don't really need to have in the, in the Git. We were pretty generous when we converted from SVN to Git and kept a lot of history, you know, lots of back in time that probably is not necessary. That's, Except that's correct. Except where that is cool to see that we have here, more than 100,000 commits or something. That's, yes, the point yeah. here is we should not update PostScript files for minor changes in the repo. Things that we do not see, we do not see. You have a picture, you don't see the difference between one thing and the other. Be conservative on, on that. As uh, I said before, we don't need we don't need that many tests that that rely on postscript. Should rely on numbers because we don't stop making it growing. We every meeting we talk about these, we say you should, but it keeps growing. Uh, I will um... new, new postscript files. Well, we haven't added any postscript directly, so it's. Not no, no, I mean, you, even if you update 100 because of something, you are updating a lot. So uh, the benefit of using DVC is that it will not grow the history of the, or the size of the Git repository when we update PostScript files, um, aside yeah. from a small text file that stores the hashes for the images. Um, so with DVC, you can clear your DVC cache and which will remove all the history of the PostScript files from your computer. So you're not bloating your repository. Yeah, I think I understood that. And DVC is a, a separate process. So only the ones that want that make a, <clears throat> a copy of that. I'm, I'm talking about the plain uh, GMT repo. And okay, yeah. the thing on the DVC is different. Okay, it's fine. That's okay. the idea. The idea I thought it was to move everything that is related to script updates to DVC. So you could update them easily, not, not wondering about or not worrying about that. But if you, for any minor thing, we keep updating the post scripts in the GMT repo. I think, we should, I think we should. Yeah, but but I think Joaquin, the, the point was that we are not doing that anymore. Yeah, right. Yeah. Doing that. They're, they're gone. No, no, no. We still are. So this That's is when. only uh... the the, um, the scripts and the documentations are in DVC, but the rest is not. And we are talking, for example. That's why I ask it if the the gallery is on the same is already in the DVC or is in the GMT repo. Okay, so but I'll give it a part, It's not the documentation. I started by, ask, by asking that because everything that goes to DVC, yeah, yes, fine. That's that's what we should do and not having to worry anymore about that. But the other part that still goes to the GMT main repo, uh, I think we have we should be more careful of increasing its size. Um, since updating, uh, setting up the system about a month ago, we have not added any new PostScript files to the Git repository. Anytime Paul implements a, a bug fix or a feature that will affect the PostScript files, I migrate all the tests for that module to DVC. So it's been, um, rather than doing 1000 tests at one time, I've been doing it incrementally as they break. So we will, <laughs> it's all set up, so we should never need to commit another PostScript file to the Git repository. 
Okay, that was my 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 concern about this thing on. on. Yeah. And, uh, but Joachim, okay, we agree that you know, so we should redouble, I guess, the effort to rebase the Git repository and get rid of the Postgres files that are already in there because you know they've always been there unless we do something about it. Oh, the, there was there was some recipes that uh, how to clean that. We we talked that about one or two years or three years ago. I don't remember. And uh, then at that meeting, we I think we decided okay when you are. Clear when they are confident that we are not going to lose anything because everything is on DVC, then we can yeah. try to rip that out, that yeah. uh, the other one out. And, uh, okay, well, let's make it. An action I'm, item. I'm saying that because I tried to run the, the, the tests and I still have yeah. the same problem. The tests go to the end and then they kill my, they really kill my shell window. We, that, they do not finish the one or the two before the, the end. And I had to update the DVC and I saw only the, the documentation. I see that the, the documentation is on the moved in the two different folder is on DVC, but the rest of the postscript files for the tests are still being used from the repo, the GMT repo. Uh, is this the uh, Megan? What's in action? What actually is in DVC right now? Is that all the tests postscript files? Not all right. the tests. I I think there's about. Well, there's over 1,000 tests. I think 700 of them use PostScript files, and I've migrated yeah. about 200 of them, about roughly, I'm not sure the exact number, to DVC. Uh, if, okay. if you think it would simplify things for the other developers, I could migrate all of them now. Uh, I've been doing it incrementally as the tests mm -hmm. fail. I see. OK. Well, the goal is to get them all in there, I think. Uh, and, and and then we can get to the state that Joe mentioned that you know we are confident and everything is working fine in DVC with the post files. And then we can do the surgery on the Git repo, whatever that entails. Okay, well I'll I'll just go yeah. ahead and and then migrate the rest rather than uh, waiting because some of wait, them wait. Yeah. will probably never be affected by the modifications that we're making right. with source code. Yeah, I think so. And then we'll just deal with updates as they come. All right. Any any last words on this? Are we okay with going forward with uh, eliminating PostScript from the repo as the goal? Okay. Um, I guess we have the documentation of the DCW collections. So just to remind everybody, DCW collections are basically names that are tied to specific regions, you know, west, east, north, south. And Federico uh, spent a lot of time getting uh, know, official definitions of a bunch of regions from the UN data sets and also from the International Hydrographic Office, some sort of uh, document that has these official designations. And we, in the process, we learned lots of fun stuff about you know, the UN Europe includes all kinds of parts that uh, are kind of crazy and America includes Greenland and all kinds of stuff. And we have fun discussions about what Europe should be and, you know, should Norwegian possessions in the South Pacific be part of Europe and, you know, all kinds of crazy stuff. Uh, but I think uh, we, I think at least my opinion on this is that we, we can't change the UN or the ISO's definitions of things, even if they are silly to us, that just are the definitions. Um, there's also the ability for users to make their own collection names. So if you want to have a particular name for an area you work on all the time, you can do that. And then, you know, you can use that in minus R instead of the region. Uh, and if you don't like the definition of UN for, for what Europe is, you just declare your own Europe and give your own West, East, North, South for that. So I think this is a very flexible system and, and your personal settings will take precedence over any other setting that we distribute as the official. So you can override whatever is in there with your own. The, the issue that came up with this is that we have like 250 of these names and seas and islands and whatnot. And you know, how do we present this to the users? So Federico made a collection of plots that basically cycles, I assume it's a batch, batch job thing that cycles through you know, all of these collection items and makes a, a visual plot in PS Coast uh, what these are. And the issue came up, you know, where do we place this 
document or these figures, because there's a lot of them. So that's the question, you know, what, what's a good place for putting these, uh, these figures? And uh, do we have a link to this, Federico, <laughs> that you can put in the chat by any chance? I maybe you, you shared it earlier on one of the GitHub pages, if you can find that. Because uh, that's a link to a PDF with, you know, 250 pages or something like that of, uh, you know, what is East Mediterranean mean and what does, you know, Caribbean, what does that look like? If you use that as mine is R. I, I guess um, to put out some of the options, uh, one would be mm -hmm. to include that PDF as a release out. Uh, as a release as asset, so it's people can just download it from the GitHub releases page. Another would be to uh, put a DCW collection section on the new GMT examples page. Uh, and a third option would be to uh, bundle it up uh, and place it in the same documentation as the remote data sets, which includes the Earth relief. Uh, and the and the new sets of geoids and uh, gravity and such. Yeah, and the DCW does have a its own page. Oh, it goes to the GitHub page, right? When you click on that in the documentation. Yeah, uh, it's it a could... it just links to the to the readme of the GitHub, GitHub repository. Yeah. yeah, it could also could also go there, I suppose. Does our introductory info on how to use this um, cover everything you were saying, Paul, about how these are ISO or UN things and we are not endorsing them and people can override them with their own stuff and so forth? I know that if, if there are certain names in there, like if they call a particular part of the ocean the East Sea or the Sea of Japan, they're taking sides in a dispute and so on. And I don't think we want GMT to appear to be taking sides because we'll start to get all kinds of flames and spam and stuff. Um, it, but yeah. it would be useful to explain to the user why Europe, for example, doesn't select the area they think it should and that kind of thing. Yeah, so right now, I think this documentation for this is very recent, but I think, you know, like in mine is R in discussion, how to specify region, you know, to go through all the various ways, there's a lot of them now. Uh, and we had this before, we could use minus R, F, R for France and so on. It, it now talks about spelling out full continent name or additionally use the DCW collection abbreviations. If I click on that link, um, it takes me to a sub page on the bottom here that talks about what these collections look like, but it doesn't show much about it here. It doesn't say there's 250, they come from this and that. I think that's, we documented that somewhere else, maybe in, Frederick, where did we put that? I know we put in links and stuff, but that's probably not in the GMT documentation then. In the DCD rip, repo. It's in the GitHub. I just share the, the link in the, okay. the Google Docs. Okay. Uh, about the names or the C names, I use the official name from the, International Literographic uh, Organization. Yeah, there it is. Yeah, maybe we they know that some names can be some problems, but uh, it's in the official name. Yeah, I see. Right. So we need some more documentation on this. I think uh, it's, it's certainly on the GMT side. It's a little bit short. Uh, maybe we need a a an explain page for. DCW collections in the GMT docs. We can link to from you know from coast from the coast web page and the minus R uh, that explains a little bit more. And then we can link to this site uh, for some real details with the links to the sources and so on. But right now it's it's there's no real examples of doing this, right? Well, there's a few there on the you know minus R Scandinavia and uh, so on. Uh, MLIS. We probably need a little bit better documentation of this feature. And I guess going back to 
Or it does talk a little bit about how to make your own file, but it's sort of short. I think I, my preference yeah. would probably be to put it in with the remote data set because the so that the timing of DCW releases, releases can have immediate yeah. documentation. Yeah. I think we do both. I think the, the GMT side thing needs to be a little bit more <clears throat> clearer and a little bit more expensive without going into the details. And then it can pass on to the to the DCW remote data sets part for for the you know the current things because that's going to be released a separate time schedule than the GMT page. So so this is sort of version one of this feature, right? So we, we have to sort of uh, expand on it. Um, but I think if if you follow that link from on its R, it tells you at least how to make your own dcw.conf file and what the format is. And you could copy and paste the example given for a few lines. You know, I made up something like Sargasso C or the French Ital Franco Italian Union, which we use for example 34. You know, you could create your own thing and, and specify what they are either as a collection of countries or as a minus our region. So agreement that we need to just beef up the documentation a bit better. Uh, and then the PDFs with the 250 plots, um, since it's just a PDF, it's gonna be a link somewhere to the document, right? So it doesn't, it's just not gonna open up a, a window with 250 plots. Well, it will do that if you click on the PDF link, but we're not gonna have that into HTML of any sort, right? It's just gonna be a, a link to this resource. Is that how we intended it? And Federico, this, the batch script that you used to make this thing, is, is that a good example for using batch? Should we include that script as a, you know, this 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 file with 250 PDF plots were generated with this very short script. Yes, I think it's uh, yes. I I share also in the in the GitHub, uh, but uh, no, it's that's it. The last comment, it file, but yes, it was uh, very simple, similar to the one of the of the module. Yeah. Well, I, I have an idea for that, but I don't know how to do it. If I will try when I learn, if you had a table, kind of HTML table with just a name and the icon of a polygon, you could have an idea without an idea of many of them, not necessarily all of them, and that uh, would give uh, the, the, the users the view where, where each name or region is uh, defined. See, you have a Table and right. then you have a small square just with a kind of icon of a, of, of a polygon. If there is when it's too small, it won't work. But when it's large enough, you can, people can recognize the, the, the region. That would be an I think a good way of um, documenting that. But um, okay, and the table. So no, I don't know what's what, what's involved in doing that. Yeah. So, like for instance, a table would have a name like the. Sargasso C, and then and then the yes, the names that we have in the uh, in the collection. Right. We have the names. Of, we should have the exact names of the collection. But and only then, polygons. Yeah. And then instead of having an image, you would have just uh, the next column, a small one, a narrow one, which uh, would have a, a polygon. But well, when it's when it's large enough area, I think it would be enough for people to recognize it. When it is small features, probably sure. not. But okay, when you say polygon, so some of these are just you know west, east, north, south. It's just going to be a block, right? I mean, so it's that usually can, you can have. Um, I imagine you can have uh, the region. There is all. They are always covered by a region, and you could have uh, uh, PS coast plot of that. Region. Right. So you would plot like the land as red, and you'll just have a yes, something red blob. like a very small one instead of having the, the the figure, just having something that show you the the region. Because that's the thing. Uh, I think people want to to know when they see their name, their, those names. What 
Okay, of course they can open that uh, big uh, PDF file and scroll and find what's there, but yeah. it's, that one would be kind of summary of the. Yeah, no, I agree with that, Joachim. That clearly is it's better for the user. So you know, from the user point of view, that is better. I guess for this to work well, you know, for an HTML table that we're going to auto generate from the script, basically, uh, it, it all the little figures kind of have to be equally wide at least or something so that yeah. they yeah yeah it's, 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 yeah it's like yeah. subplot yeah. it's like a subplot if they are if they are don't if you are not square or rectangle don't you don't use the entire area sure um but i guess um, the way i would do this if i were to do this it would be some sort of script that will generate the html somehow for this piece <laughs> In a loop over all the features, you know, and then there's no subplot; it's just the individual plot of each. I thing. mean, I, I gave the subplot as an example. When you do a subplot, yeah, you yeah. don't have to fill the, the entire square or rectangle. You can have right the the aspect ratio does not allow it. It will be a uh, narrow strip, for example, it can be. But you, could, like, for example, it could be they could be projected, and then you would not would not need to have Antarctica as a very narrow. Yeah, yeah, or, you know, yeah, long. sure. Yeah, maybe we. Um, if Federico is willing to help with this, we could we could pick a couple of, you know, a handful of names, and then we make a mock up to see what it might look like, you know, before we consider doing the two hundred and fifty, just to see what would this web page look like, you know, just make a couple of a thumb, you know, not thumb scale, but the sort of small images that have a similar width but maybe variable height or something. I don't know. I don't think we can impose the same size of these images. Because of aspect ratios. Okay, let's let's just make a, an issue of this on GitHub or DCW GitHub on how to document the collections better using visual aids. That sort of captured it, right? We want to make sure this is useful for the users. Um, and and more useful than being told to look at this 250 page PDF, right? I mean, that's a question because that's the easy one. If that exists, that's available. It can still exist. But um, I agree with Joachim. This this will be better for the user to find things and sort of get a visual feedback. What what is meant by you know Eastern Mediterranean or Middle East, South, or whatever <laughs> all these things are called. Uh, instead of having to, to wade through a long document. All right, so we'll make an issue out of this and then we'll, we'll do the work in the issue until we, we come up with some good plan on how to implement it. I think the point I raised might be satisfied just by having like a little one sentence disclaimer of some kind in the, in the notes disclaimer. documentation page that says that, you know, these we're making these things available as a service, but GMT is not endorsing these choices of, of uh, geographical names or, or region limits or whatever. I love it. This is Walter speak. I, I've seen this many times because the federal government <laughs> always has to be very careful that you're, you're speaking either as a private person or not representing government and there's no, no way taking sides in anything. <laughs> so I think that's good. We can, we can Actually, have my, my, my caution on this point comes from 20 years of service to Jebco where, um, certain of the marginal seas around the world, what you call them is a very contentious issue. As I mentioned, East Sea or Sea of Japan. Um, there are other examples. And uh, so I haven't looked at the DCW and what it calls things, but it might not be as sensitive to those issues as we might like to be. That's my concern. Yeah, that's a good one. I think we can certainly put in that little disclaimer. And uh, we, we do get emails from time to time about, you know, the border between India and China and stuff like that. <laughs> this is hopeless to, for us to try to resolve any of these issues. Uh, there was some island off Korea that Japan wants or something, you know, just crazy stuff like that. That's, it's in the wrong worst. color. Worst. And, <laughs> yeah. Well, or worst, we didn't have it for a long time, but Moroccan saying, why, why is not uh, West Sahara part of Morocco uh, country? Oh, okay. You remember we have that, I and we don't have that. that one. Don't, we have the Morocco and West Sahara. That is, it's a okay. separate. That one part the, the yeah, okay. So no one has pointed this out then, because you know we haven't been told from time to time that wait a minute, you know, 
this thing doesn't exist anymore. And say, oh yeah, yeah, sure, sorry, sorry, and all this 1970s data will we'll, we'll remove that. No, no, but that one, that one is still in the UN definitions. That, that one is one that, uh, well, I don't disagree, contrary <laughs> with a couple of others, which are silly. But, uh, I mentioned that before. Well, yeah, actually, yeah, yeah. You guys, uh, if we, I know we're being silly, but we could raise a serious issue here. Another thing that one can imagine doing is actually having a time series of these things so that if a historian <laughs> wanted to use GMT and show how the boundary between one country and another has moved over the years, that could be animated. I mean, Yugoslavia. you have this, you have this <laughs> Yugoslavia. All the imagery, you know, over time. <laughs> and, uh, so well, I, I do happen. remember some some example, some GMT example of somebody doing that for the Roman, for the Roman area uh, time period. Yeah, sure. And I mean, it's it's a very nice one. That's very nice one. Yeah. But there's the like, Alexander the Great's conquest. There's a map in Wikipedia that's yeah. GMT based. Yeah. Yes. It's probably the one exactly that one. Yeah. Yeah. I, I added a, a link to the Jebco disclaimer on our doc so we can use that as a guide when we create our own. We could even include the part that it shouldn't be used for navigation, as I think that our GSHH GMT stuff you should not be used for navigation. Yeah, I, that, that's fine. We can put that in. It's, uh, that, that's pretty standard language. Well, if anyone feels energized to make historical time series maps of of, you know the Balkans or something. Knock yourself out, but I don't think we're going to support <laughs> support the databases. <laughs> All right, let's see here. We should we should move forward. Um, we have the I think we covered one, two, three, and four. So there's the open discussion, and then of course in the in the process we lost um, our student who was interested in Sentinel and filling grids. <laughs> so so there we are. Uh, I'm not sure what we're going to talk about there. If I remember from the posting she had on on the forum, it had to do. Okay, Ranko is finding some. Oh, you can't read it. Sorry. Caution: Do not use five navigation. <laughs> yeah. <Only>, oh. <laughs> very good. <laughs> yeah, that's very detailed. All on hydrographic maps. I should have that notice. Yes. Yes. That though yeah. they are the only ones who who can who compromise them, but. Uh, their depths are good for navigation. <laughs> Maybe, Maybe we can we add have... a modifier to GMT logo for adding a navigation warning to your plot. That's right. Mine is U plus uh, W for warning. So every GMT map will have this stupid disclaimer printed in bold <laughs> diagonal across the map. <laughs> okay. Um, I think we skipped sentiment. over the, the color maps um, issue. Oh, the color I... maps completely, Ramco. Okay, thank you. So uh, just to set the background for this. So Remco wanted, they started with Remco wanted to add a new collection of color maps for, for uh, ocean, uh, especially for oceans. And we said, yeah, this is great. And then we realized, well, you know, while we add it, how do we manage our CPT collections? Because just having thousand names uh, scrolling by is not very helpful. So we thought maybe we need to organize the CPTs into collections for using that phrase again. And so right now, GMT has the GMT CPTs, and we have uh, Fabio Crameri's scientific color maps. They're all in one box, but his maps could be a separate collection, as would the MC Ocean collection that Remco is suggesting, and, and future collections could be separate. So we will have a little better organization in how GMT presents the color maps. And this would likely introduce a directory um, prefix to the, the minus C when you specify things, if you aren't going with the GMT defaults or the GMT collection, which wouldn't require anything new since we want to have backwards compatibility. So, you know, in the future, minus C may have, uh, you know, uh, S, SM, CS scientific column, C, SCM slash turbo, no, not turbo, uh, what are these things called? Torino or something like that. Right. And it could be a matplotlib one where we borrow matplotlib or matlab ones. And we would have that as a directory prefix to get that particular one. And this also yeah, means, think... yeah, go ahead. Yeah, yeah, this came in the end from this picture, which is now done with Turbo, uh, but used to be Jet. And then, of course, one of the guys, visual guys at Yumitsat said, uh, the, you know, my poor eyes or somebody's poor eyes will not be able to see the jet thing. 
Uh, this is, by the way, Tsunami, uh, uh, Walter, uh, by Jason by Jason uh, 3 and Sentinel 6 uh, in, in Tonga region. So Tonga is right here oh, behind yeah. me. Yeah, here's the, yeah. Yep, there it is. Yeah, uh, Remco, we're working on that too, and I, I'd be happy to talk to you about it later because we're seeing much more of it in the Sigma Knot than in the uh, surface height. Yes, yes, in the Sigma Knot, I see all sorts of strange things, but I didn't want to go there yet. I mean, this was the, the quickest thing I could do, and it's clearly long wave features that are not uh, significant wave height. And um, mm -hmm. But anyway, uh, so so we did turbo, and um, and then uh, I was looking, and then another guy said, "Well, look at these CM Ocean things, which for us Ocean guys is, is very interesting because they have also color maps for uh, algae blooms and all those kind of things." But of course, they already had a topo, uh, or she actually, it's Kirsten uh, Tung, probably is pronounced. Um, uh, who uh, who created those and they also has a topo and also has another a gray um, so you know I don't want to have overlapping names and also it becomes the, the too many you cannot keep them apart anymore so maybe somebody is saying, saying oh yeah in matplotlib I know which colors to take from CM Ocean but then you need to scroll through the whole list so maybe CM Motion slash um uh algae for example is uh, would be would be practical of course you want to have a backward compatibility i totally understand i think my approach would be indeed store them in different directories and then because we have the list um that's embedded in in the make uh, cpt uh it would just if i type in um uh one of the older ones like say topo again it would automatically go on the lens, find the first topo, which will always be GMT topo because it will be on the top of the list. And only new mm. ones will be on the bottom. So we never have one that has already an existing name that will overwrite the ones that we already had. Right. For somebody who really wants to be picky, they write GMT slash topo or panoply slash panoply. If you just simple, yeah. you just type in panoply and it will, it will pick the first and only panoply in it. Uh, those kind of things, I think, would be very mm. practical and would be very easy yeah. easy to augment without any problems with backward compatibility in that case. It will need yeah. this change in the software to run through the list to either yeah. check the full name or the last name. Yeah, But that should be yeah. easy. I think that would be easy and I can help you with that. We can work on that together. Uh, yeah. So it'll just be... I need to know, figure I, out, I, yeah, which, which came from where. I, Fabio is clear because they all have Fabio in the name. I mean, in the yeah. in the original in sure. in, in the, the files, header yeah. in the yeah. files, uh, but uh, some of them I don't know uh, where they came. And then there's some from the Matfold lip, like Veridis, and yeah, yeah, and we can clearly identify. Yeah, yeah. So there's a little minor coding thing in how we list them in Make CPT and GRD CPT. There's the reorganization of the documentation to into collections yeah. instead of just the endless thing. That's Pretty straightforward, I think, and then it's just uh, yeah, placing these files in these subdirectories. So I think it's a, yep. a good good improvement that allows for yep. expansion. Uh, one thing Megan and I was mentioning yesterday, I guess, was you know there's there's clearly CPT City, which has been out there for decades now with lots of CPT files. Uh, did we want to somehow? more formally tie into that I and mean, we just have it in documentation we say go here if you want even more cpts but we could also imagine either harvesting from them or use a url to directly get their files from gmt yeah i think i think at some point url would be the issue we we, we do not want mm -hmm. the thing is of course this the cpt once they are converted in some way they're still on the old gmt4 format yeah yeah. Uh, do we all want to reformat them? Maybe not, um, unless we, so so we don't. Mm -hmm. So I think that make G CPT will probably still understand them. Um, yeah, they do. So so probably as soon as we type in CPT city slash something, it will use it will actually expand to the URL. I think that would be the the best way to do it. I do not know how to do that honestly, but I can probably figure that out from other examples. Uh, that you use for the uh, for the data downloads or something. I don't know. Yeah, yeah. I think I think that's all doable. If, if a CPD is a URL, it will go to get there. And the, the files. I mean, I clicked on a few. You know, they have 
a bunch of subsets under CPTCD for different yeah. authors and groups. And some of them have only have one file and some have many. So there's like collections within collections, but they all have, you know, reasonable URLs you can get by having a table of all these names. You can create, you can create a URL to the CPT. They do have CPTs, as you said, uh, GPT-4 yeah. versions. And, you know, the question is how do we, List the availability of these things, I guess. In our no, we don't. We don't. We just no. say, you know, you, for anyone here, you can just yeah. start the name with CPT city slash yeah. and then, you know, Whatever, extend yeah. the, the URL as, as, as they come on the on the site, something yeah. like that. Yeah, because all those things, I looked at some of them, they are, they're not what we consider master CPTs that are in a normalized zero to one or something like that. They, no, are, they are very not. often practical, you know, this is for bathymetry for Bulgaria and it goes from minus 1700 to 32,000, whatever. So we would just read them as any custom user CPT and just use them for the plots at hand. So I think that'd be fine. Yeah. And I guess that that's MC Ocean, are they see emotion? Yeah. Yeah. Are they, they are so... actually if you look at the original, the real original Python one doesn't have any skill. So it's just RGB, 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 RGB. Okay. Nothing else. Yeah. So so um I could okay. use the original ones and put them either for minus one to plus one if there is a hinge, right. or yeah. zero to one yeah. if there's no hinge, which yeah. I already start to do. Or I could take this, um, Kirsten actually made CPD versions and then run okay. them all from, I think, all from zero, no, from one to 257. That, of course, is a bit <laughs> awkward, so I'm, I'm rewriting them. But, but I think I, in the end, I will use her GMT versions okay. and, and just uh, change Re the... Yeah, we we package it. Yeah, and put a nice header on top and and, and all that. So clearly, putting cool. the reference, also the reference to the paper that she wrote and all that. So yeah. it's it's clear. Yeah. Do you do yeah. you know her by any chance? Or no, not at all. Okay. Not at all. It's just okay. that the colleague of mine referred to it, and um, yeah. it's clearly somebody who used GMT. Otherwise, you wouldn't have created in GMT version yeah. on it. There's a GitHub uh, version on that. Yeah. So I will, document, I will document. I will document in the in the same admin script as uh, as Megan made for the scientific maps. I will, uh, I, I think you made it, right? Um, the scientific color maps script. No, I was just the last person to modify it for the latest. Oh, okay. <laughs> okay. I think okay, I I'll, I'll, um, okay, so I'm doing uh, a similar thing and um, <clears throat> and then uh, and then create those uh, the already in a directory CM, CM motion. And... Okay, that's cool. Yeah. I was thinking right. we might want to, Ping her. Okay, Walter, go ahead. No, I was just going to say, um, I'm sorry, uh, you should finish because we're finishing that thing. I was just going to say CPT City also has a lot of categorical yeah. uh, color maps that are, you know, groups have, some of them are, for example, an internationally standardized set of colors to represent the geological epochs in, in geologic mm -hmm. maps and things like that. That's kind of thing. It's sort of useless to map it to zero to one. So, um, I don't sure, know if right. we just provide a link and let the user figure out how to use it, or if you want to do something, you know, think about how to support categorical stuff also. Well, we do, well, so GMT supports categorical CPTs, but I'm not sure if those files there are in the right format if they're not GMT4 level stuff. So I think we will just not, we don't do anything about these files other than link to them and the user is using them, whatever, in, in any, any form they are. Uh, we're not going to reformat them on the fly or do anything crazy. We'll just be, you know, here, you can use this link directly and uh, without going there and download the file first. That's that's how I would see it. And just to finish the thing with Remco is, I think after we get this collection ready, we might want to ping her and say, hey, you know, thanks for this stuff. And here we've done this thing. And by the way, it would be fantastic if, if, if you want to adopt this kind of format for CPT files in the future, because she's going to probably update this in, you know, in a year with some minor changes or yeah. add two more. And then, you know, yeah. we have to go through the same rigmarole again. So it'd be good to, yeah. you know, edu educational moment, <laughs> how to make the CPTs uh, future-proof to some extent, you yeah. know, the mastering. Yeah. yeah, that's a good idea. Yeah. All right. Uh, the sorry. Turbo CPT, I think is color blindness friendly. Yes, exactly. It looks very much like Jet. Yeah. 
No, no. Uh, well, it's it's it was made to to look as much as possible as jet, but it's it's a uh, color blindness friendly. Yes, uh, exactly. So I changed my friendly. jet to turbo and in the background. You can use yeah, it yeah. with uh, with uh, less worries. Yep. Then we get into you know turbo came up to us from Google. I think you know so do we have do we have to make a Google collection with a single CPT or do we just say nah these are all GPT things by now we just stole them a long time ago and we're not going to worry about jet being MATLAB. Uh, I mean, so, so I guess that's the issue, right? Are we going to sort out uh, three matplotlib ones and have that as a matplotlib collection? And then, I don't know, we got jet and copper and maybe a handful more from MATLAB. I guess we should do that. And then it gets into the weeds, you know. I guess we'll find out to see what we find there in the, in the decision. Yeah, I think Fabio is clear, so we can at least uh, put him in a separate yeah. one. The Panoply one, I will put in a Panoply with a single one, uh, unless uh, Panoply has a few more that we could borrow at some point. Okay. Um, uh, but um, yeah, most of the others are GMD. The Matplotlib, the recent ones, the Veridis and so on, yeah. that's obviously Matplotlib. Yeah. Matlab, I don't actually know which we had taken over. But... We took the. Uh, Copper and I think Jeff came from there, and uh, there's there's a couple. I think Hot came from there. Uh, so yeah, I but think that's so long ago. That. That's GMT three. I know. <laughs> yes, it is GMT three. But you know, if we are gonna anyway, we will. We should look the, at the pedigree of some of these things uh, and see yeah. how many collections might be reasonable. We don't want to have you know two hundred collections. <laughs> yeah, I think. Yeah. Or one with lots of them and just a single CPT that gets kind of pointless. You know that oh. at the end we will not use more than three or four. Yes, we all have our favorites, and that's no. it. <laughs> no, yeah, well, I'm, I'm starting in, to in, in creating hundreds of collections. Yeah. People don't I'm use starting it. to. I will say that I use one or two, but okay, I'm being generous and expanding to three or four. Yeah, no, actually, actually I'm yeah. starting to, to try out more uh, from time to time for particular um, uh, purposes, uh, things yeah, that bit. just look uh, that I that I feel demonstrate better for a lay user. Um, you know, what is high and low, particularly, you know, um, when you have anomalies, make sure that, you know, they are usually there's a hinge and it's it's like going blue and red or and and but that's very strange for signal wave height, blue to red. Uh, you know, then you you, you take they take something else uh, that is continuous. Like we're talking about algae, you know, don't make algae math. Well, you can totally understand that those are the like the greenish stuff. Um, there are there are you know, not scientific uses for it. I totally agree, joking. Any scientific user can read blue to red maps, but a general user. I think not. Um, they 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 need a bit of help, and um, so so I think I, I think about that, and and also I think with Walter saying a categorical maps, I think that's that's very uh, uh, there's a clear use for that uh, to make sure that uh, the colors are very distinct, and and maybe in certain cases as Walter saying that they follow some kind of standard um, uh, that is being used. So. Yeah, no, I, I agree. Uh, so, King, you know, we all like just to, to use uh, um, the red, blue one, polar one, and 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 jet, and uh, and then we all feel happy. Um, but uh, but then, oh yeah, also phase, for example, in CM C motion as phase, which is clearly cyclic. Uh, we have some cyclic ones in in GMT as well. But yeah, if you're yeah. putting if I'm putting tight model of phases, I, I I need a cycling map. I cannot just do jet. Sure, right. You need a cycle version of it. I mean, yeah, I, well, of course. Uh, for many years, I have a couple of hundred or two hundred in Miran that also I picked from from uh, GIMP and some others because I found funny to put a lot of them. And then I, I realized that the ones not not even no, use them, yeah. but we have a page with the color with the with the color yeah. scale. Yeah. Um, if we increase more, are we going to increase that table? Make it a two-page tables with a with, with a yeah maybe maybe we'll just in the end put a well anyhow the the the, the, the documentation is mostly web paged the, anyway. Maybe for example, is the, those not probably uh, sites they have they have pictures they have uh, 
pages yeah. showing their, their their color scale. So better that as just redirect them to them instead of adding maybe yeah. maybe into yeah. our Only... H A four page that you have two millimeter color scales that you don't see nothing. That just better to redirect to the to the originals to see that them in in in, in full detail. Yeah, that could be, could be. Although I like sometimes to, to just, you know, have an image that's all formatted the same and then I'm picking, yeah, this one is probably the best for my purpose here, but yeah. yeah but you, when it's so tiddy because you're so- Yeah, 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 yeah. But uh, on the web page, you can scroll, scroll, scroll. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's not a, well, we, we don't want, you know, thousand CPTs, scroll, 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 scroll. No, no. But uh, it, it, we're not there yet. <laughs> No, I think we're okay. And and by if using the categories, it makes it a little bit more organized at least. Yeah. Right now this is just Wild West. Um the filling of the grid. Well, you know, I don't know if you talk about that now. <laughs> That's sort of a user uh, how do you fill in missing portions of a grid? Well, you, what do you want it to be? <laughs> you know. No, she she left uh, uh... I know she left, so it's like I, 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 I didn't really under, understand what she meant because, well, Walter, you said I, I don't use Sentinel three, but her her grid has thirty kilometers grid space. Is there any Sentinel three with thirty kilometers? Yeah, that's altimetry. Altimetry. Altimetry oh. is nadir, so. Okay. So, so she was thirty kilometers between the tracks. Over, um, what was she coming from? From uh, Malt, Greece, uh, oh, Cyprus, or Malt or something? Yeah, Cyprus. 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 Yeah. So, yeah, five or six nodes. And of course, the map was ugly, and then there were some gaps. Well, yeah. if it is altimetry, yeah, of course, uh, he had the island, the land, or something like that. And she said that the map was rotated, which it was not, but it was so small that we could not see anything else. And then she wanted to. Get the gaps, fill it. Okay, I understand what she wanted. She wanted to have a pretty map. Yep. But she yeah. cannot have a pretty map. She, yeah. she puts it over uh, uh, Cyprus with uh, something that has a grid space of 30 kilometers. Yep. Yeah. No, I sound like I, it, the forum issue, we can just continue to ask. We can work on that. It doesn't sound like, you know, a GMP problem kind of thing <laughs> or use, uses, no, a user issue. It says, yeah, it's a user issue for a service, I think. Um, service would help her, but then she first needs to take away, uh, you know, some kind of model. I don't know what she's mapping. If she's mapping the geoid or the mean she's service, then first get everything, some model out and then do service and then add again. Oh, well, Walter knows how well to do this stuff. Yeah. Uh, yeah, we can I never do that anymore. There is, uh, there is a CMEMS for that. <laughs> <laughs> they do it for me. They do the interpolation. <laughs> we only provide Excellent. the data. Excellent. Um, I, th I think we should just steer her to the right place to get help with this. Um, yeah, yeah. You know, this wasn't the right meeting for it, perhaps. But um, yeah, I think you never know. You never know who is going to be your next generation GMT developers. So um, you, we want to capture all this interest somehow. Yeah, we'll, we'll get back to her on the forum and uh, try to understand what the problem is. Right, and that's usually if we'll have a solution. Uh, since I have you all here, um, so the, my plan is to actually go to Oxford finally <laughs> after a very long delay. So uh, I'll be there for a total of six months in probably in a couple of chunks starting late February. And of course, being in Europe, and maybe maybe COVID is residing a little bit, there is the possibility of a GMT get together of some sort, uh, somewhere. So just let, planting that seed. I sort of mentioned it before on the email, I think. But you know, we will try to do this maybe in the UK since Leo is there also with a baby. Uh, so uh, we'll get back to you on that. But you know, if you're interested in being involved in a get together in Europe. I do think I have funds for this, so it, it you know it wouldn't be it, it would be covered as a GMT summit if you're interested. If this is a safe thing to do, et cetera, et cetera, you know. So there there are some complications, obviously. We'll be sitting outside. 
Um, and, uh, and you also saw the issue of the UNAVCO geodesy workshop that we've done every summer that we'll do it again this summer, working with Dave on good timing. Looks like his July is wide open. So it'll be sometime in July, probably. It's, this will still be uh, online, like the last one. So if anyone interested, I mean, I know I've asked you guys already, but if you want to be involved in that, that's an opportunity. Uh, they can, they offer us a whopping $750 uh, per instructor. So that's well, at yeah, least yeah. three or four pizzas. Uh, so that's good. <laughs> um, so that's all I got. Any any last issues? I don't want to hold you. It's been an hour and twenty minutes. It's a long meeting. Excellent. Well, Remco, Remco, are you coming here this year, or have you been <laughs> to Portugal? I've yeah. been postponing our holidays all the time. But have, <laughs> we have you going, come here we during, going during for these Christmas? Years? It didn't work. No. We were going for summer, it didn't work. We were going just going for Christmas, it didn't work. And okay. um, so it, our, our flights have been postponed again for uh, for summer. And then we'll go down to the Algarve as well. So even if it's in Lisbon, I go there weekends. Yeah, no, yeah, we, we if, if it's summer, we'll go down uh, again to the to the coast. If you come down, Algarve. of course, but even if it is Lisbon, so yeah, yeah, I'll let you know when we are there. All right, guys, sounds good. So we'll follow up with uh, Remco on the CPT, with Federico and Megan on the collections, and the rest will just see you guys on GitHub, I guess. All right, thanks for coming, everybody, and uh, stay safe, as you say. And we'll have a meeting in the bottom, probably when I'm in Oxford. All right, take care, everyone. Take care. Bye. Bye-bye. Thank you. Bye. Have a nice